And hello everyone, it's Thursday, it's June 23rd. It is happy Brexit day to everyone. The British leaving the Union, and I've been out leaving the Union, European Union that is. I've been out and about um, driving to the airport and driving back. Um, I don't even know, honestly, um, how they voted. Anybody here in the webinar know how they voted? Um, we could look it up together, I suppose, but again, I don't care that much. One thing I did show before we get into the topic is this is my portfolio of robots, and um, I don't see a whole lot of action, right? No trade, no trade, no trade, no trade, none, 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 zero, zero, zero. Okay, so apparently, there's not a lot going on, and I don't care if Britain, Britain stays or if Britain goes. I only care about how it affects my robots, and frankly, it's not doing a darn thing, so... I suppose that could change as more and more news comes out and as it becomes final and blah, 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 but who cares? All right, so we're going to get into uh, part two. Uh, it is game time. If you saw my Wednesday video blog post, you know it's game time, and I'll talk about exactly what that means to me in a moment. But yesterday, uh, in the blog post, I did talk about the Friday-only portfolio, and one thing I didn't show was a picture. So let's go back over to my robots real quick. I wanted to show you this. This was a trade from last Friday. Now, this was not a trade in my regular portfolio, all right? So don't think you missed out. If you trade robots, don't think you missed anything. This is in the Friday-only portfolio, and I built this a long time ago, and I've just been watching a trade, but this happened not in my regular CAD yen, but in the Friday-only CAD yen, but this is the type of thing I'm talking about. Yesterday, we talked about trading a Friday-only portfolio. I mean, what's the catch? What's the problem? Why, why not do a Friday-only portfolio? Well, there are some reasons for and reasons against, and you can check that out. Uh, it's on my blog and on YouTube and so forth. But the one pro for trading a Friday-only portfolio or just trading on Fridays, period, is that if you're day trading like me and you're going for small wins and a high winning percentage, Friday trading is the only way to get a big win, right? Because every single day that I get into the market, I'm just trying to take small wins. So I'll never get a multiple 10, 20, 30, 40. I might get a 10, but I won't get 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. You will never get those wins unless you trade on Friday. And this is just an example. The trade took. It meandered a little bit around on Friday. And now look, this looks like a horrible trade. But Friday trading, right? You're supposed to fear the gap, right? And I understand the reasons for fearing the gap. But look, right? Now, if you, if you look back on the chart, you can see, I'll get rid of that. Because, again, I don't think that's the right RSI. Um, but you can see the trend from here to the trade, right? What's the trend? Obviously up. Now, it got in on a pullback, which these robots like to do, right? And then it just kind of looked like nothing. So if you just look at this part of the trade, it looks like garbage. Oh, I got no trade, and this looks like it's going to gap down. And, and as a human, what would you have done, perhaps? Get out of the trade right before it close? I mean, that would be a logical thing to do, right? <clears throat> but instead, the trend was up, and it kept going in that trend, and you got a huge gap winner. So while there are reasons against trading Fridays and holding over the weekend, I'm just telling you, there's no other way in a day trading format to get these huge wins. Now, of course, we have trend following to get big wins and so forth, but I just wanted to show you an actual living visual example. All right, let's get into the topic for today. And I'm going to talk just for a brief minute about myself. And Keep in mind that a lot of this yelling and cajoling and convincing has nothing to do with you. <laughs> I'm mostly talking to myself. Now, one of my favorite quotes of all time, it's something I used in my tennis coaching for years, plural, decades even. I would tell my students, I'd say, well, I went to a tournament and I had a test the night before and I couldn't, and I didn't play well and I didn't sleep and I couldn't eat. And I'm like, and what would I say to them? Failing to prepare. Is preparing to fail. If you're going to go play a tournament, if you're going to compete, you have to sleep right, you have to eat right, you have to get up a minimum of two hours before, you have to eat a minimum of hours before, you never walk on the court and that being your first ball hit of the day, you've got to get a warm-up, you've got to have five to ten minutes of visualization time, you got to you got to have a game plan, and on and on, right? Preparing, failing to prepare is preparing to fail. If you prepare, you win. There is no getting around that. Failing to prepare is preparing to fail. John Wooden is famous for saying that. I think he stole it from Ben Franklin, but it doesn't matter. That is absolutely true, and I've lived my life by this. I will never step in front of the video monitor or the webinar or speak in front of a group of people, even though I gave a speech on court for every day for 
so how many years? 20, 20 plus years. I never just got on the court and didn't prepare. I never get in front of you without preparing. I like it that way because it's enjoyable and because it works. Okay. So please don't get me wrong. I, I live this. I live my life on this particular saying. However, failing to trade is preparing to make no money. And a great philosopher said that. I won't say who it is, but there are the initials, right? But that's my point. It's one thing to prepare. It's one thing to research. It's one thing to look back and find this trade example, that trade example. Okay, I'm going to research this. Okay, what if I do this input, right? It's one thing to be thorough. But if you never, ever trade, if you just sit and do research, you don't make any money, right? So why are we in this business? We're here talking about robots because we want to trade for a living or we want to have robots do the trading for a living. Well, if you don't trade, you don't make any money and there is no trading for a living, right? So at some point, you have to stop researching. You have to get in the game, right? It's one thing to give a bunch of tennis lessons to someone. Guess what? You got to go play tournaments. You got to go play tournaments, get some feedback and come back and we'll fix the stuff, okay? So that as a backdrop, I'm just honestly confessing to you, I'm a little bit tired of myself. I'm, I'm tired of me, right? As I said, I love being prepared. I love the research. I just love doing the work. I love it. I don't love winging it. I don't love being unprepared. I hate that. And I really don't like stupid, hasty decisions. Well, whatever, I'll just do that, right? Stupid and hasty. Now, can it be immediate and smart? Of course. But I just, I don't want to just fly around willy-nilly, say, I want to trade this for no reason. I want to have a reason. But the number one flaw in me that I found over the years, especially recently, is that I'm really, really overly afraid of losing on a stupid mistake or losing something that I quote, unquote, shouldn't have. For example, um, it goes back to my teenage years when I was playing doubles in the state tournament. I was playing with a good partner, and frankly, I considered us the state favorites. I considered us the favorites to win the state championship. And in the quarterfinals, that we had five set points in the first set. All of them were on my side. I was returning. All of them were on my side, and I lost them all. We ended up losing a close match, and I'm not over it. I was 18 years old or 17 years old, and I am not over that loss yet. Why am I not, not over that loss? Because we should have had it. Right? Five set points on my racket. All I had to do was make the shot. And I didn't. I mean, call it choking, whatever. I mean, I, I was a good player. I deserved uh, to be on that court, but I choked, right? Let's just say it. I've, and I've had other losses that don't resonate with me at all. But specifically, do you understand? I don't like losing something I should have won, right? Same thing in trading. I don't care if I lose a trade. You know, obviously, I'm not happy about it, but it happens, whatever. But if I lose a trade and I had the wrong trade size, or if I lose a trade and I go back in my research, I'm like, um, you know, you really shouldn't have even taken that trade because if you had just done some work, you would have found out that that doesn't work, right? I'm really, really uh, uptight, I guess is the word about that. I want to have it thoroughly researched, and then I can lose whatever. I'm perfectly fine with it. When I lose trend-following trades, it doesn't bother me at all, honestly. I can't believe how little it bothers me because that's just part of the game. So I'm just telling you this because I know this is my flaw. I'd rather research and be sure so that I can handle the winning and losing just the same. And that's why I'm not as bold as I want to be. And that's why I'm not as bold as traders I admire. I honestly feel like, and this is, again, just a, a mea culpa, a confession. I feel like if in the last 12 to 16 to 18 months, if someone else had access to my robots, someone else would have made just a boatload of money. I feel like I've been way too casual, not casual, I've been way too um, unbold, right? It's not even a word. I've been way too reticent to trade. I felt like I could have gone in with big trade sizes. I could have. I felt like I could have made literally thousands, maybe tens of thousands of dollars more than I have by being bolder. And that really, really, really bothers me. And it's really, really bothered me because obviously my life has changed quite a bit in the last 30 days. So this is now my number one focus. And it's really gotten to me. Now, there are times, obviously, as it's been lately, where you have to worry about execution. You have to worry about, is your setup right? right? I'm not going to start trading big trade sizes if I'm not sure if my internet connection is right or if I'm not sure the trade's going to. I'm, I'm not going to do that. And we've been talking a lot about that. But I just feel like all of that's already been taken care of. 
And I feel like, as it says on the screen, my going for it has been really, really, really poor. Okay. So this is the background of what we're talking about yesterday and what we're talking about today. This was in the post yesterday. You make no money if you don't trade. Do you get it? I've said it twice now. And I said it yesterday. You make no money if you don't trade. And again, I'm mostly talking to myself. Okay. But you might say, or I might say to myself, how then do you get started? I mean, okay, it's time. All right, I get it. I get it. I get it. I'm going to start trading. Fine. Stop yelling at me. But if you're, if you're wondering, or if you have this voice in your head, how do you ever get started, right? How do you know when you've done enough research, right? If you do want to be thorough, if you do want to be prepared, how do you know you've done enough, right? How do you know that? And furthermore, how will you ever know that this robot or this trading strategy is going to work, all right? Well, we talked about it yesterday. Listen, you'll never know if it's going to work, okay? There's no certainty, whatever. So stop being a baby. And again, I'm talking mostly to myself, right? So don't worry, is it going to work? That's just garbage, right? Do your research, and then you'll just have to find out, right? But the second way to know if you're ready to go is if you can't think of anything else to research, then it's time, right? If you've researched it, you've researched all the data that you have, and you've researched all the inputs, and you've researched and researched, and you don't have anything else to do, well, then stop, right? Trade it. And sometimes there are really great traders and people I admire that would stop even before the research is done, right? A good decision made right away is better than a great decision made an hour later, right? A general or something said, maybe patent, somebody said that. And that's absolutely true. Instead of waiting for everything to be researched, if you have enough research where, listen, the numbers look really good, I'm going to go with this and find out. I can keep researching as I go. That is probably the best way to do this, and it's something that I've been seriously thinking about in the last two or three days. Well, here we are, and I can't think of anything else I need to do. I, don't, I can't. I mean, I've got tons of research projects, but I'm talking about what I've already built. I can't think of what else to do, right? Aside from new projects, I mean, I just, I don't know. Why not get started, right? So that's what we're talking about. So. Let's introduce the lone wolf. Yesterday we talked about the Friday only portfolio. All right, let's go a different way. Let's say you only trade one robot. <gasps> Whoa. Okay, let's talk about that for a second. All right. Now keep in mind I love diversification. I believe in diversification. I can't see myself not trading a, a diversified account. I can't see that. Now is it going to be all of my money? Well, that's why we're talking today. But I'm, I definitely believe in diversification. It's as old as time, right? <laughs> diversify. Diversify everything in your life. It makes sense. A long-term portfolio should be diversified. Put it aside and let it be diversified. Let it do its work, right? But what if, aside from that, this is what I've been thinking about, going through my head, what if you wanted an account with all the eggs in the basket? What are the benefits from having another account that just trades one thing? Right. Well, here they are. Number one benefit is focus. You don't get overwhelmed by 11 other robots, right? Or 10 other robots or four other robots, <laughs> excuse me, or however big your portfolio is. You don't you don't get overwhelmed. It can be if you're an early robot trader, it can be quite overwhelming to see 11 robots firing trades at you. Now, they probably won't all ever go off at the same time, but four or five trades at once, it's a lot. And if you're new at looking at it, it's a lot. And it's still, you know, daunting for me. You know, it's still weird to see four or five trades at once, right? So it's easy to get overwhelmed. And that's a little bit freaky. And, and no, there's nothing to do in a robot portfolio. But gosh darn it, it's just like you may want to have to peek at it. It may interrupt your life because oh, I got five trades. on. What's, what's going on? What's going on? Or it's just easier to get distracted, like, oh, crap, that one lost, right? You don't see the four other winners, like you just get wrapped up in losing, and then maybe you're tempted to turn it off or whatever. I mean, there are ways to get distracted and overwhelmed if you're in a portfolio, right? But if you're focused, oh, how did my robot do today? Oh, oh, it didn't do well. I had a loser. Oh, why? Oh, look at that. Oh, news came out right in the middle. Guess what? That happens. You move on. It's really, really easy <clears throat> to watch it go wrong and just deal with it, right? Number two, you reap the reward of a hot streak, right? And what in the heck is that diversification? That's not even spelled right. Um, you reap rewards on hot streaks. What does that mean? Now, diversification's hot streaks are, are milder, right? Now, I mean, that's the point of diversifying, right? You have two that win, you have one that lose. You have three that win, you have one that lose, you know, and you gradually work your way toward, right? It eliminates drawdown. But in a lone wolf portfolio, 
you get on a hot streak and your account goes through the roof, right? Winner, 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 winner. Up your trade size maybe, add to your account, whatever. You can go up really far, really fast. And you'll never really do that in a diversified portfolio. Yes, you'll have hot streaks, but you'll never see massive change in your account equity if you're not if you're doing something bigger than a lone wolf. Another benefit is you know immediately when something goes wrong if you're just trading one robot, right? It will clearly exceed your worst losing streak and your worst drawdown. You'll know this. What? Uh, in the last 11 years, it's only lost 10 in a row. You lose 11, it's time to figure something out, right? If your worst drawdown has been a thousand or two thousand dollars and you lose 2,500, you immediately know. With a diversified portfolio, it's just harder. I mean, yes, you could look at the cold hard numbers. I understand that. But there's a lot going on. There's a lot of math. And you can see your account. But it's like, well, who caused that? Well, well, what part of that diversified portfolio? What's going wrong? Is it the pound cat? Is it something else? What is it? With a lone wolf, you see a problem, you fix a problem, right? And it's really, really easy to stay on top of it, right? So, you know, if you decide to go for it, you'll know really fast if it's working or if you're in a, a historically bad drawdown. You learn to understand your robot. You really learn its characteristics. You learn to know when a good trade might go. You, you'll know when a hot streak is coming, right? You'll just see the charts just look the same. I mean, look at these robots for as long as I have, and you just watch one, you can tell when it's going to go right or going to go wrong, right? And thus, it's easy to make corrections. For example, right? And this is, you know, for good times and bad times. But let's say you get two losers in a row. And both of those losers get within one pip your profit target, right? That is a real easy thing. Well, you could seriously consider and then test, you know, in a night, in an hour or two, go back and run the data again and say, listen, what if I move the profit target? Oh, wouldn't make that much of a difference, but it would help. Now, maybe I'll change it by a pip, right? That sort of stuff, you learn to understand your trading system and your robot really quickly. With the diversified portfolio, it really is just kind of sit back and watch, right? And then number five is C number two. The main reason for trading a lone wolf portfolio is um, the hot streaks, to see that account equity grow. I mean, we are in this to make money. And making money fast is, um, I mean, it's worth considering, all right? So let's say I took one of the robots, one of my favorite robots in my current portfolio, and I said, okay, instead of trading 10 or 11, let's trade just one. And a quick break. Mmm, delicious. Here are the stats, and I'll show it to you in a second. The average return per month, again, this is on a hypothetical $10,000 account, is $371. I mean, that is nice. That's an average, of course. You're not going to get $30, $370 every month. There's going to be losers. There always is losers. But that's not bad. I mean, 3.7 a month, right? You, you mean, do the math. That's a nice year. And the biggest drawdown at that trade size is $1,800. 18% drawdown. Not bad, right? That's under the 20% threshold that most people can handle. That's not terrible. But if you like more risk and like more action, of course you could double that drawdown. On a $10,000 account, bump that up to 36%, 37%. That's getting up there. I understand that. But now you're making $740 a month, you know, right around that number, right? Now, if you're making $740 a month only on a, only $10,000 of, of account capital, I mean, that pays for something, right? 700 bucks a month, I mean, that's got to pay for a car payment or two or a, some of your mortgage or your food bill or, I mean, it pays for something, right? I mean, that is a significant amount of money with only putting $10,000 out there, right? Uh, the monthly winning percentage is about 76%. And let's take this moment now that we've talked about it to look at it. And I hope I'll, I can make it a little bit bigger. Can I? Okay, I can. Here is that particular robot and real quick, that's the robot in question right over there, all right? Uh, going back to here, um, oh, whoop, no, back to the spreadsheet. So here are the monthly breakdowns, um, and I highlighted in yellow the worst, the drawdown periods. But you can see that, I mean, these are nice numbers, right, on a hypothetical $10,000 account. And you can see it hasn't lost since November 2015. Um, that's what I mean about a focused portfolio of people. Do you get it? Look at this winning streak. If you decided to compound your gains, Good grief, right? You'd be doing quite well. How much money is that, by the way? Let's add it up. That's $5,700, right? Mm. Of course, there's a down. We had June and May. There's a bet. There's a drawdown, right? That's 700 bucks. There's a $1,000 losing month. And there's the worst drawdown in 2011. 
um, it went from um, 8 to 10, 2011. And in that three-month period, you would have lost 1800 bucks. Now, could you stick with that? 90 days and all you did was lose? I mean, that's the, the that's why we're trading, right? That's what we're trying to figure out. And here are the return breakdowns. And I gave you the per month figures since all the way um, back since when this began. Scrolling down, it's 160 months, right? So for 160 months, that's what it's averaged. But look at the averages recently, right? Since 2015, it's more than that. Since 2014, it's even more than that. So this particular robot has done really, really well of late. Does it make you feel happy or make you feel sad? I mean, that depends on, right? That depends on how you feel. Is luck going to run out or have you reached a certain market condition that's very favorable? But here's one thing, and we're, we're going to talk about, I have a couple other things we're going to talk about in the future, but I want to show this number. This is a metric that I just uh, started looking at seriously this week. The difference between the best winning period, right, the best average per month, which is since 2013, this is the, you know, this would be nice. If you start in 2013, that's the most. The difference between the best winning period and the lowest winning period, I would like that to be, honestly, 0%. I mean, wouldn't it be great if it made the same amount of money forever? For 160 months, it made 300 bucks a month. And in the last 12 months, it's made 300 bucks a month. Of course, that's Bernie Madoff. That's never going to happen. But what I'd like to see is a, a small gap between the best it's ever done and the worst it's ever done. Why? Because that means that you could conservatively speaking, start thinking about this number. <clears throat> well, I can, I'll can. i do at least this, but it's going to be around that. If this number is bigger, and all I did was, subtra was subtract this into this and divide by that, if this number gets bigger, let's say it's 50%, right? That means that your best winning month was 400 a month and your worst losing period has been 200 a month. That means that it can change quite a bit, right? It's a, it's, it goes up and down with the market conditions. So the smaller this number, the better. And what's interesting about a lone wolf portfolio is that there isn't that much variation. You would think that it would go through periods of time in different market conditions where it would really not work. But it stayed really, really consistent. Hmm. Let's go back to the chart, right? Or to the slide, excuse me. Okay, if I were selling this to myself, Right. Let's imagine. Right. I'm having a, a sales meeting with me. Right. And I'm not and I trust that I'm not giving myself bogus unresearched numbers. Right. Not some Internet where hey, it's 90 percent winners. And I'm only going to show you the last six months because I haven't really researched this. You know, if I've actually researched this, which I have and I haven't curved fit the numbers, <laughs> hate that. And I haven't. Right. Although, you know, it's just my word for it. I'm selling this to myself. What would be the holdup? I mean, like, why wouldn't you trade this, right? I mean, why wouldn't I? Well, here are a couple reasons, and then I'll take some questions. Here are some reasons why I may argue to myself. All your eggs are in one basket, right? Going through a losing streak with only one robot is, well, it can be depressing, right? If you have a diversified portfolio, Someone's always going to be winning probably while someone else is losing, right? If you're in a one-horse lone wolf portfolio, um, there's only one thing doing the trading. And when you lose, it's like, man, I got no hope, right? You go through a losing streak, it's like, ah, it's never going to get better. So keep that in mind. Trade execution, of course. If you only have one robot, um, you need MT4 or whatever your platform is to trade it pretty much the way you expect to trade it. So that, that matters, right? You only have one robot. There's no others that, oh, man, I did great on the pound yen, but I didn't do great on the dollar yen. There's no hope of that. So you have to watch that really closely. Um, it have to trade it pretty much the same. Um, I have people that I talk to that get bored. I have people that I've talked to in the past several years that get bored. They want trades. And when you trade one robot, guess what happens on the day it doesn't trade? <laughs> you don't trade, right? And that might make you a little crazy. It might make you crazy just have one, right? You need the action. So that would be a drawdown. No diversification means you win less, right? You have less profitable months, right? Your winning percentage is always going to be higher on a monthly basis with a diversified portfolio. Winning makes it easier to trade. Winning is fun. So if you're trading a lone wolf, you're trading off. You're going to win less often. Uh, there's nothing, as we talked about, diversification means also your drawdown is bigger. In a lone wolf, your drawdown is way, way bigger. If you're diversified, it's way smaller. Can you deal with that? You get the hot streaks, like I said, but you also get the cold streaks, and both are magnified. 
and you need to understand that. And lastly, the robot could stop working, right? If you're just doing one robot, um, it, all of a sudden you could reach your max drawdown and then exceed it, and then what, right? That's all you got, right? You've gone through a losing period, now you got to do the research. In a diversified portfolio, if one robot goes off the rails, honestly, you may not even notice, right? You have so many other robots, you can even wait it out, right? Just I'll just wait till that rogue robot comes back in the style. Um, you don't have to worry about it. In a lone wolf portfolio, you need to worry about it. You need to watch your losing streaks and watch your max drawdown, watch your monthly drawdown and pay attention, right? But then again, it's only one robot, all right? So um, there are a lot of pluses and minuses um, but this is the sales pitch I'm making to myself. It's like, why not do this? Here are the numbers. Why not at least try it out? Why not put five grand on it, 10 grand on it, two grand on it? You know, why not put some money on it? Well, this is, this is a very deep, important conversations I'm having with myself, okay? Bottom line is, it's, if it's time to stop screwing around and st getting started, would you trade this? I mean, you meaning you, but also you meaning me. Is this how your game time would begin? Is this how it's going to begin for me? Um, well, uh, chances are um, we could be, I'll, I'll absolutely tell you what I finally decide, but um, it's something I want you to decide for yourself too. And I've got a few more possibilities um, that are banging around in my head. So we'll be talking about those also, but I cannot promise you by the next time we meet that I won't have already started doing one of these. So I make no promises. All right, let's take some questions real quick and I will wrap it up if there are any. Let's scroll back a little bit. Hey, Douglas, by the way, how are you? Um, all right, let's scroll down. Uh, audio, video, good. All right. Pound dollar looks like they're staying. Yep, yeah, exactly. Um, you could have two or three pairs that complement each other well. So a super two or three robots in a very active portfolio. Absolutely. Douglas, gosh darn you in your active fertile mind. I'm going to talk about a three robot portfolio next week. <laughs> How did you know? You're reading my mind, Douglas. It's freaking me out. Um, let's move on. Uh, I think that's all the questions. So let's give, let's give some quick updates and we'll move on. Um, I'm going to keep saying this over and over. Nothing's more important than getting these training costs, but I'm so pleased with version 1.6. Um, it, the people that have reported trades to me and my personal trades have all looked good. And then, of course, Brexit came, so we turned them off, which sucks because we probably didn't have to. Once again, calamity is there, and you don't have to turn them off. But whatever. Uh, they're off this week. They will be back on Monday at the latest. So, um, But that's something that needs to be watched, especially in a day trading portfolio. So that's never going to stop being a concern. I'm going to meet with Wes. I made a slight change to the new trend following portfolio. I'll have that out soon. Um, but I'm excited about that. Um, VPS might be in my future. I'll keep you informed that um, OANDA is really trying to make it um, very usable for its uh, OANDA people, OANDA members, OANDA clients. So I'll be giving you more, more news on that. But I'd love to have a VPS. I'd love to be able to log in at any time. I've always wanted to. I just never have needed to, really. Uh, and again, I'm not trading robots. Um, I probably won't trade tomorrow. Again, a mistake. Feel free to trade if you want to. Um, it's probably a mistake. Um, but I just don't want any silly stuff. Uh, and I want to do a little bit more research on uh, which new portfolio I'm going to go game time with. Um, and I'm looking for a house to rent, um, by the way. Not that you care. I'm just telling you. Um, this was our initial stop was in South Carolina. Now we're going to find a more permanent stop. This is the plan all along. It was originally going to be Florida, uh, but we're kind of loving South Carolina. So um I will be a little more busy, but it's going to be nothing like before. It'll be nothing like the chaos. This will be all fun and relaxed and an easy move, and it'll be no problem. Um, and for more portfolio considerations and more videos, um, check the th Thursday webinar, check my blog, um, YouTube channel. I'm, I'm starting to get more subscribers. I'm going to be doing, obviously, at least two videos a week and maybe more. So I'd love to have you subscribe to my YouTube channel if you're interested. Um, that way you'll get these videos. Um, I try to put important information out, so I'd love for you to be able to be notified immediately when a video goes up. I, I don't want you to miss anything. So that might be a good idea to do the YouTube channel subscription, um, but that's up to you, of course. And there's my contact information. So I'll check back in with you. Um, let's see what, any questions, and then we'll uh, wrap it up. Let's see, oh, there's Douglas with his two or three. All right, Douglas says, what about futures on currencies? Um, I was just testing last night a futures currency robot. Yeah, I was interested. That would be with, that would be staying with TradeStation. Oh, Douglas says, I had 10 of 11 winners over the last four days. I know. Brexit has been a great week to trade. I, I mentioned many times 
that my day trading portfolio loves bad times like 2008, 2009. Um, and this is part of me being not as bold and maybe stupid and make, maybe want to punch myself in the neck. Um, but it's worked fine during Brexit. Now, you know, there could be a gap or something coming up shortly. So, you know, who knows? But yeah, I, I know it's been great. I've been watching it. Uh, what time frame does the trend following robots trade on? 240 minutes and uh, version 1.6. All right, everyone. Um, always love being here. Uh, we're going to talk about at least two different, two more portfolios for me to put my money on. And uh, that will all happen next week. Happy trading and we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.